Hi, I want to talk today about uh, the indirect truth table. So what happens here is this is an argument that has, uh, you know, when you're, when you're doing truth tables on arguments, they usually have more than just, you know, one, two, or even sometimes three, four, five, six different, you know, capital letters, different propositions, different simple statements. And so what happens is, is because of that, you know, this one has three different propositions, three different letters. So it's two to the power of three, which equals, you know, two times two times two, which equals eight. So this needs eight lines. Well, that can be a lot of lines to do. And what you're ultimately looking for is you're trying to find a line in which all the premises are true to see if the conclusion is true or false. And this one, the first line here, has the premises true and the conclusion is true. So it doesn't cause invalidity. And if you look, there's no other line in which all the premises are true. All these are true, but all these are false. And when this one's true, this one's false. There's only really one line that's even at all relevant for us to determine if it's valid or invalid. But yet you've done eight lines. And so that's a lot of extra lines to do for something that's not going to you know, prove it or not. Now this argument I've get down here is a valid argument. It's, it's a modus ponens. But the problem is, is it has, um, it, it basically has, uh, has um, you know, this argument is a valid argument, it's a, it's a, it's a modus ponens. But the problem is, is, you know, if you had five variables, you'd be doing 64 lines, and maybe you'd only need one line to prove validity or invalidity. And so, you know, you, you know, it becomes a lot of extra work, a lot of extra uh, effort to basically, you know, you're doing a lot of lines that really aren't relevant. So that leads us to what we call the indirect truth table. And what the indirect truth table does is it says, what if instead of trying to do the entire truth table, what if we just made the assumption that the premises are true and the conclusion is false? What if we just assume that? And then we ask, is it possible with that assumption to have a, uh, a, a um, invalid argument? Now, first of all, some of you may have noticed this, but I put that in the wrong spot. The, uh, this is the main operator. So what happens is, is if you make that assumption, then you go back and you say, well, in order for this to be true, with a dot, the only way for the dot to be true is both of the conjuncts, both things on both sides of the dot have to be true. So you know that A and B have to be true. So we can kind of carry that work over and say, okay, if that, this were a line onto itself, the A and B would be true, and then that would make that dot true. And then true horseshoe true, or I'm sorry, true horseshoe what here would make this a true statement. Well, the only way that can work is if C is true. If you have a true antecedent, in order for it to have a true conditional statement, the consequent has to be true. So, but if you look here, C has to be false because it's already labeled as false over here is part of this conclusion. Therefore, you have a contradiction. And when you have a contradiction, you have to conclude that the argument is in fact, um, uh, you have to, you're basically when you find a contradiction, you find that that doesn't work, then you found that you couldn't make it work where you had true premises and a false conclusion. And therefore it's not invalid, but valid. So it's a little weird because when you find a contradiction, you find validity. Um, it's only when you don't find a contradiction when it works that it's invalid. So there's a little bit of kind of a skewed on that but that's the way it works, is you're basically just looking to see if you can get it to work without having uh, to do it. If it works, then it's invalid. If it doesn't, it's valid. Now, the only thing is, is this one only took one line to figure it out. Sometimes, like, if you had a premise like A wedge B, and this was a, this was a premise, and you would make the assumption it's true. Well, you know, that can be true if A or B is true. It can be true if A or B is uh, if A is true and B is false, it can be true if, you know, A is uh, false and B is true. You know, all those would allow it to be uh, true. So in some cases, depending upon the situation, you may have to do more than one line. If you find the first line gives you true, 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 you know, and the next one gives you true, true, you know, and no, uh, true, um, 
or you find a contradiction, you know, you found a contradiction and you found a contradiction over here. So, you know, you, you basically, this did not work to make it false, but yet you come down here and it does work. It only takes one line where you have true premises of false conclusion for it to be, uh, to be, it works. Therefore, you know, it is invalid, that kind of thing. So there's only, there's only need one. So if on the first line you got true, true, false, and it worked out, then you could stop at the first one. But until you've exhausted all the possible lines, so basically what this does is by working it backwards, it allows you to possibly do one line and possibly do three or four lines. It can vary, but that's basically the way it works. So I'm just gonna do one of these from the book. And this is one I have not, uh, I have not um, looked at. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. It's a long one. Um, I'll just go ahead and do it. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be doing this cold. So we'll see how it goes. And I'm going to do number eight in the book I have uh, from 6.5 exercises. And it has a premise J horseshoe parentheses bar L, or tilde L horseshoe tilde K followed by K horseshoe tilde L horseshoe M. Next premise is L wedge M horseshoe N. And then the conclusion is J horseshoe N. So you're gonna come along, you're gonna assume false, true, true. Oops, wrong one, sorry. true and true. Now, one of the keys here is, is what I would always start with is I would always start with the one that's easiest. With conditional statements, the, the only time you ever get a false conditional statement is if the antecedent is true and the consequence is false. So let's begin by assigning the value for J and N. So we can now take the value N as false and put it over here. Is there another N? No. Is there another J? There's a J right there. Okay. Now, what we can do is we can say, okay, if we have a false consequent, does it matter if this is true or false? Uh, no, it actually doesn't matter. So this is probably not the premise to start with. We can come over here and we can say, okay, this is true. We know nothing about this. So once again, there'd be three lines. But if we come over here, we have a true antecedent. And the only way for this to be true with a true antecedent is for the consequent to be uh, true. If it was false, this would be a contradiction. So we'll make the assumption this is true so that we can try to get this to work out. In order for that to occur, this could be true or, and then that one would have to be true, or this one could be false and this one could be true, or this one could be false and this one could be false. So now because of this, there's really only one way for us to go with this. We're gonna have to make, you know, we're gonna have to do this three different ways. So let's go ahead and start with the first way where we make the assumption L is false or K is, and then K is false. So we can now take K over here to be false, L over here to be false, L over here to be false. Both L and K are false, okay? So in order for this, you know, T horseshoe, you know, in order for a horseshoe to be, you know, with a false consequent, this has to be false, which means M has to be false, right? Our, our antecedent would need to be false horseshoe false to give us true. So we can assume L and M are both false. L is false, so now M is false. Uh, L negated is T. So true horseshoe false is false. Force horseshoe false is true. And if we look here, we can find we actually got this entire line to work. There's no contradictions in here. So we now know that this works, so it's invalid. We don't have to go any farther. If we had started on one of these other ones, we might have had to do more. Maybe we would have started here. If you had started there, you might have done this a little bit differently. It's kind of a little bit of how you go, but you're basically just working it backwards. Some people find this a little bit more confusing, but it does save you a lot of time. At the end of the day, I'm not as concerned with people being able to do this as much as, you know, 
there'll be a couple questions where you do it. Um, you know, I, I think it can, it begins to get a little bit, uh, it kind of takes it to the next level. Um, and it, it is good to be able to work it backwards. It makes, you have to make assumptions about what's going on. And it is kind of an interesting way to do it. But uh, obviously, I'm not going to, uh, you know, be that big, make that big of a deal about it. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and assume you guys can do some of these. If you want me to make some more, send me an email and I can see if I can, I can do that. All right.